Hey everybody, it's Old School Nerd, and today we're doing more of these requests because we're going to get them all knocked out. All of the requests that occurred on last week's Super Chat, we should have done by the next Super Stream, which is in two days. <sighs> Only six more to go. Here we go. And that also includes the Sabaton when I'm doing, the Baby Metal unedited which should be released in about in about 24 to 36 hours and leo which we do every friday and also i saw a comment request today that when i saw it it's got to be done it has to be done because it's a song that i know you're asking me for an artist and a song that i've known for a while in fact i've known about this artist and this song for exactly 11 years and when I tell you the story you're gonna be like oh wow no wonder but we're gonna do that tomorrow it, right now let's do this one Ginzu says Aussie band that needs more coverage okay nay Oblivascaris and Plague Flowers of Kaleidoscope live in Colorado 2016 normally what he said didn't make a lot of sense until I typed it in and it literally came up just like this in YouTube, and I'm like, that must be the right one. <laughs> so I think we got it. Okay, Genzu, this is the one you want. Nay, Oblivascaris. All right, sounds good. Like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for the uh, uh, the subscriptions, the likes, the comments. Please keep the comments coming because I don't know what to do next unless you guys tell me about it. Check out oldschoolnerd.com. It's got all of our social media. We're still putting posts. Something's gonna happen Sunday, 11 o'clock Central Time, U.S. time, which I want to say is three, three o'clock, four o'clock in the afternoon, GMT, maybe, something around there. I'm going to post the tag so you can see what your time is on YouTube because I know it, it changes it for all of you. Uh, also, check out onoldschoolnerd.com. We've got the Patreon for those who want to help support the channel. We do appreciate that because that's the only way we're going to stay here. And, of course, the merchandise channel uh, that has all of my stupid shit. Shirts and coffee mugs and stuff. Anyway, so let's check this out right here because Ginzu wanted it. We're going to do it. This is, well, of course, let me get my beard out of the way. All right, here we go. This is Nay. Oblivascaris, Plague Flowers, The Kaleidoscope, live in Colorado 2016. I've never heard of this, so this is totally new for me too. Let's check it out. So as I said before, we are Nail Oblivascaris. We come all the way from Melbourne, Australia. Awesome. We have been wanting to come here to the U.S. for so long, and it's just absolutely amazing to have so many of you here and really see us. So thank you guys so much. We really, really appreciate it. No, we appreciate you. Um, bass player, two guitarists, drummer, violin vocalist. Interesting. We have one more song for you guys tonight, but before we get into that, over in that back corner over there is uh, our merch desk, and about five minutes after this show, we're gonna be hanging out over there, so please come have a drink with us, say hello, and we will do our best to come back and see you guys again as soon as we can. <laughs> this one's off our album, Portal of Eye. This one's called, And Plague Flowers, The Kaleidoscope. Really good. Damn, he's good. Okay, you started a song using a Zilbel hit. I'm in. <laughs> I'm almost thinking that maybe Ginzu was like, yeah, check out this band, absolutely. Somehow I think he knew that, that this song starts with a Zilbel hit, which... You guys, if you're from this channel, you know I'm all about Zillbells. It's weird. 
I'm strange. Uh, second thing, um, really like the violinist. I love the way he's phrasing that. His arrangement is very good, very clear playing, and it's not what you would think of as either country, blues, folk fiddle, nor does it sound classical. It sounds very unique, which is amazing. And don't even think about telling me that lead singer does not look as metal as possible. How freaking metal does that guy look? Really, he's just all of it. The look, the way he's standing, it's just way over the top. Super metal front man. You could just, it's just insane. Does the drummer, does he or does he not look like Wash from Firefly? Just throwing that out there. Also did not expect this sound. I mean, the violin kind of gave it away a little bit, but with the lead singer looking as metal as he looked with the double guitars and the bass player and the way this setup was with the drums, I'm thinking they're about to rip this open metal style, but it's very folksy. It's very cultural and unexpected. I don't trust it. I like it. I don't trust it. I don't trust, I don't trust Ginzu. Ginzu is, do you, he, he's sneaky like this. Some, I just feel like it's not gonna stay like this. It's gonna go really left or right turn at some point. Left-handed bass player. I knew it. <laughs> Okay. Ginzu, you sneaky son of a bitch. <laughs> okay. Um, just from this guy's look, I knew he was either going to be a screamer or a growler or a wailing Ronnie James Dio metal singer. It was going to be one of the three. His look was giving it away. But what I didn't expect was the violin player to hold these sustained vocal notes for a good 15 count, which is ridiculous lung strength, which is great and clear and crisp, no breaking. It was beautiful. I'm going to back it up about 10 seconds. And with all that going on, you're so distracted by this, this guy who should be in a death metal band, <laughs> right? 
it's almost like you know it's really almost like he doesn't belong one of these people doesn't belong here that's what it feels like seeing him but then when he starts you're just like mm. okay so between the contrast of the 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 violinist singing those sustained notes and him doing his growling you know what you miss the drummer has taken the fuck off he's gone listen you'll hear it here we go hear that That segue portion between the two vocal sections where the violinist starts playing again with the, the guitars and drums. For a while, I was wondering why the guitars were not, were not as metal. They were still fairly rock style, you know? They're like, na, 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 instead of, you know, it's like, it wasn't as diffused. It was, didn't have as much crunch. Uh, not as much, uh, not as much effects. It wasn't, you know. And at first, I was confused by that. I was like, the the singers are going heavy, and the drummer is trying to literally see how much air he can catch on his drum. He's trying to get it to float, and that's all real and cool. But it, again, this song, this band, this approach, the arrangement, the style, it's such a clash because the drummer is. He's he's going hard, okay. This this vocalist here is straight up death metal, right? Um, if you put him into a strobe lit dark room with a stupid crazy heavy metal band behind him, it, it would seem totally normal. But then you have this guy over here who he he's singing like it's a folk song, and he's playing violin in a beautiful just rendition. Of melodic tones and then you have these two guitars who are head banging but their guitars are not they're not playing overly loud and the tones used through their pedal work and through their settings do not are not indicative of heavy aggressive metal and the bass player is just I mean it's just all over it's it's very unique and which I love. It's a clash, it's a clash of styles. And then I, I thought, well, maybe, maybe they're not going as aggressively metal tone in the guitars because if they do, then there's no place for the violin. Either way, it's different, it's interesting, and I dig it a lot.
it's so non-conventional it almost confuses you because the mix is unique too normally when a guitar solo occurs like this the guitarist pushes his pedal and goes into overdrive which increases his gain into the system to where he can be the standout musical element within the phrasing but in this case this guy's playing the guitar solo and if you weren't watching him his fingers you'd be like i don't hear it because the bass is still either the same volume level as him or a little bit higher like they've intermixed it so well that they're not allowing the guitars or they're not setting the guitars to push the melody they're allowing the violin to still be way above everything else when it's played and the bass is at the same level as the guitars to where you hear the guy plucking the rhythm section in, in the bass guitar and you're hearing it over the top of this guitar so and it's so different here's what bothers me this dude just put up devil horns this dude put the freaking violin down so i'm not sure what the hell's about to happen this guy looks like if he's not doing this he's a collection agent for the russian mafia and this guy's like if only i was in a metal band and of course wash is still back here going on the leaf on the wind for those who haven't seen serenity or firefly you don't know what the hell that means but you should check it out thank you guys so much we're nailed with the scars we'll see you guys next time <laughs> Okay, this is more metal. Now this is more of what is considered the standard, the standard setup where your guitarists drive the metal sound. Your bass player supports it and the drumming goes along. Before it was this alternate universe where a folk singer with a violin and a heavy metal death metal screamer growler person and a jazz bass player is playing over the top of the two guitars who are playing metal music but nobody can hear it and and the pilot of the serenity from firefly is playing really really fast it was kind of confusing me but now they're doing this and i just saw the violin player pick up the violin so is he going to be overpowering again or is he going to fall within this realm that we are commonly comfortable or that we consider to be the standard for metal genre where the, the guitars take the lead? We don't know. And until, until I push this button, we're not going to find out. So I'm going to, I'm going to do that now. This will probably be the last time I stop unless I do something really crazy. Um, it did change uh, the melodic arrangement and who, which instrument leads the sound of this arrangement has changed. It's altered. The guitars have now really amplified. Uh, they've increased their tone, their veracity, and they're now leading with that heavy metal rapid uh, strumming. That da -da 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 -da. Okay, and then the violin, you can still hear it in the hook position, but it's not leading the melody now. The only thing that really hasn't changed, holy shit, the drummer. He has been flying on these bass pedal kicks and has been poised, shoulders square. He has not over accentuated anything, no wasted movement, very tight drummer. 
smooth as silk, which is a little scary. And I don't know where, I don't know where Johnny Danger's going right here. Um, I hope he doesn't get lost, because Children of the Night are going to come get him. Just say it. He's so calm playing the drums like that. You, it almost, it's like you could cut the screen off and you wouldn't think this guy is playing those kicks. That's how, that's how smooth his, his foot stroke is. And, and it's, perfectly, it's perfectly on the point. He's definitely on the metronome mark. He's not fluttering. It's not increasing or dropping. It's staying pretty consistent all the way through. He's really good. Just for comedic value because it's Friday, okay, can anybody explain to me what he is doing right now? Watch. What the hell is he doing? What is he doing? What, what, what kind of dance was that? Also, not only is he over dancing, but this guy's feet, I don't think they leave the ground. Watch him groove. I swear to God, his dad was the actor who played Lurch in the Adams Family. I don't think his feet leave the ground. Watch. 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 I am three. I play bass. Me no, oh, oh, he took a step. Holy shit. That must have been his bass solo because he moved a foot. Speaking of moving feet. I know I made fun of the, the bass player, but he's he's really good. His bass licks are smooth. He has not stopped yet. Very, very good. It's kind of got a good jazz groove to it, but still, it's still good, uh, still strong metal. Also, you guys are noticing that the drummer appears to have a GoPro strapped to his chest. No, that's actually an ACD in case his heart should stop because he has not stopped playing like a madman, and it's going to shock his heart so he can continue to play. Your guess is as good as mine.
Okay, I know I picked on him a little bit for some of the for some of the oddities, but it's I, I didn't I wasn't trying to be ugly or anything. Musically, they're they're quite exceptional. The, their musicianship is top notch. I come on, the drummer does look like Wash from Serenity Firefly. Don't get me wrong, he, he does. And yes, he does have a GoPro strapped to his chest. And yes, I really thought that his legs were going to catch fire. Okay, that's all good stuff. Um, this right here, this guy, this rhythm guitarist right here that was on stage left um, or crowd right, um, the most metal of all of them. Okay, um, the the this guy here, the lead guitarist, legit licks. This guy, yeah, he 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 knows his art. He knows his craft. It's exceptional. Um, the bass player, okay, I know I made fun of him a little bit, but how how can I not? Um, I I'm I'm pretty convinced that he when he's not playing bass, he's he's literally like. Yvonne McBasket. I mean, he's <laughs> he d okay. His fingers and the way he plays do not match the persona upon which he portrays. Fair enough. Okay. Now let's talk about the two lead singers. Okay, and this I think is where a lot of the clash comes across because when you're looking at these two lead singers, they have such a unique difference in the way they are. This one total death metal growling screaming just everything about it is just as dark as you want to go and he does it great he's amazing at it and i like it totally cool this guy here he got mm, it he's okay the violin playing is amazing he has a beautiful voice as i'm going through it i'm thinking wait they're from australia when this guy was growing up did he literally get in the mirror and just go I need you tonight. And he's just singing in excess the whole time. Cause that's what he reminds me of. He reminds me of the lead singer of in excess and kind of a Jim Morrison doors guy. And he's just kind of, you know, just winging it, you know, and he jumps in the crowd and, you know, and here's the thing. What can, what, what puts a smile on my face now, but yet was confusing the crap out of me 30 minutes ago was the way this band is together. They are such a clashing amount of different styles and it works. So, hey, Ginzu, thanks for pushing me, man. That, that, was, that, was, a, that was a mouthful right there. Okay, everybody, that is Ne Obliviscaris and Plague Flowers the Kaleidoscope live performed in Colorado back in 2016. I wanna check out some more of these guys. If not for anything, I just want to see how more out of the box they go. Because that stuff's cool. Yep. Love me some out of the box stuff.